All right. Let's go ahead and let's get started with this female figure. Um, if you looked at the instructions, this is called the auto mode blocks. Female figure. And uh, like always, I'll just put my last name on here and hit OK. Doesn't specify whether or not it has to be inches or millimeters or centimeters. So we're just going to go with our default um, and we're going to go with inches. Now, normally you would create a sketch in the front view, but because of the way you have to keep rotating the parts and um, whatnot, it's to avoid a lot of headaches. Your best bet is actually to start on the top view. Now, those are really the only ones I use. And the only reason I use these two is because one, the front view is the one that you want to always look at. But the top view is going to be like if you're building on top of your table. All right. So in this case, this is what the view that's going to make the most sense. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch on the top view. I'm going to rotate the part. And then we'll look at our first uh, thing here. So we have the triangle. And the triangle is 0.556, the, the length of the distance here, this little slope. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, this is technically a new tool because we actually haven't used the polygon tool. All right. And so if you click on inscribed polygon and you click on the center origin here and you move outwards, you'll see that, Mr. Santana, this isn't, this isn't a, a triangle. What are you doing? Well, that's fine. Click and you'll see that if you move upwards, that it starts adding more sides to it. But if you start working your way downwards, then you'll have a minimum of three sides and that's your triangle. So I'm gonna click on that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give it the length that it needs, which we said it was 0.556. There you go. I noticed that it is fully constrained here. For some reason, this is blue. Then you need to choose one of these edges and use the parallel tool here to go ahead and make sure that it's parallel to one of these two lines. Now, if you don't know what that looks like, let me show you. All right, see how this moves around? Actually, well, let me just undo it for you guys. So grab my polygon tool. All right, this is not um, straight. So even though I give it a number, 0.556, you'll see that it's still blue. So if you have that issue here, you can click on this parallel line and you can say, you know what? I want this line to be parallel with this line. And there you go. It's black now. It's fully constrained. Now this thing can't rotate anymore. All right. Now that we've done that, let's go back to our worksheet. And if we scroll down, you will see that we're going to extrude this 0.32. So I'm going to hit extrude and change this to 0.32. I'm going to go back to my top view. Of course, I'm going to zoom in. And you'll see when you scroll back up that we are not using the circle tool. We're using the ellipse tool. Now, there's two of them, and they're kind of overlapping here, which is kind of confusing. And so I want to make sure that you guys understand, at least from that angle, that you are, in fact, looking at an ellipse. And um, so anyways, now the ellipse here is telling you the distance between the center to the outside. So it's radius. But when you're using the on shape version of the ellipse tool, it's asking for the diameter. All right. So these numbers that are going from the center out, you have to double. So in this case, 0.125 being the widest point and 0 0.05 being the height, you have to double those. So let's go ahead and let's do that. I'm going to grab my ellipse tool which I should create a sketch first. Grab my circle tool and you'll see ellipse. And right off the bat, um, if as long as you're moving horizontally, you'll see that dotted yellow line. So it could kind of like latch on. I would go ahead and do that and then click again. And now we set the width, the widest point. Let's try that again is 0.125 we said but again it's double that because they gave us a radius um we need the diameter so from here to here is what they provided but we want the whole thing so we're going to double that 0.125 and then same with this we said it was 
0.105. So 0 0.105 times two. There you go. Finish your sketch. All right, now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and according to this, you'll see that there's this floating plane on there. We need to offset a plane, meaning you're gonna create a plane and you're gonna offset it. You're gonna move it upwards. So I'm gonna click the plane tool right here. I'm gonna click on this surface and you'll see that by default, they want to do an inch away, but that's not what's required. According to this, and if you zoom in, you'll see 0.19. I know it's kind of hard to see, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna change this to 0.19, and now it's at a more reasonable um, distance for the legs. Create another sketch. This time I'm gonna create a sketch on plane number one, and I'm gonna draw another ellipse. Now this um, this automobile blocks actually has a similar body composition as like one of the South Park characters if you guys ever watched the show, where the the legs are kind of just attached to each other, and so there you go. That's what we're recreating. So in this case, the height here is 0.110 and the width is 0.14. So 0.11 and 0.14. We need to double those. So the width. is 0.14 times 2, or you could just type in 0.28. And the height, we said it was 0.11, or you could just put 0.22, if that's doubled. And we'll just hit OK. Now that we have our both of these sketches, now we can go ahead and loft. So I'm going to hit the loft tool, which you guys used last time. And you're going to click from here. You're going to loft to here, just like so. And you're going to hit OK. There you go. There's the first part. Now we can move on. So we should be done with this section. Now we can just focus on here. Um, just to add to some of the confusion, um, you'll see that the ellipses that they use here they actually provide you the diameter. So before they were giving you the radius from here to the outside, but now we're working on a diameter. All right, so you don't actually have to double these numbers. You just have to keep them the way it is. So. Now that we finished the legs, we can worry about the hem of the dress here, which is 0.4 by 0.6. So let's go ahead and let's get that done. Create a sketch on top of here. Grab my ellipse tool. I'm going to rotate this around. And this is going to be pretty big. Again, make sure that it's straight. It looks about that. The width, we said it was about 0.6. And the height, we said it was 0.4. There you go. Finish your sketch. And if we look at the next step, is we need to loft it upwards. But in order to loft it up, we need to create another plane. So we're going to offset this plane, and we're going to move up 0.36. So I'm once again, grab my plane tool. Click on here. Let's try that again. Got my plane tool. Click. And you'll see that by default, it wants to do one, which is supposed to be 0.36. I'm going to hit OK. Once again, I'm going to create a sketch on this plane, rotate that, and now we can worry about the waist. The waist is 0.31 by 0.39. So let's do that. Ellipse tool. And um, we said the height, oh, you see right off the bat, it's already off at an angle. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Let's try that again. Make sure that it's aligned. The height we said was 0.31. The width is 0.39. There you go. I'm going to finish my sketch. Now, last night I had an issue with this where it was glitching out, so I'm hoping this is not the issue. But it looks like I might have that issue. The issue I was having last night is how to do with it wanting to select both of these circles. So let's try this. Yeah, it's not working again. All right. I have a feeling it has something to do with where the plane was created. And so I am going to see if I can 
undo some of this. Forward. Let's go ahead and offset the plane one ton again. Uh, Mr. Santana. Yes. When you um, are doing the loft and you have to select the different um, sketches you want to um, loft with, can't you select it with the sidebar? Like you don't have to um, select it um, on the plane or your work area? Uh, yes, you can. So if if uh, that doesn't work, I'll go ahead and I'll give that a shot. Thank you. No problem. All right. Let's try this again. 0.31 by 0.39. Sorry, guys. It's just kind of the things you have to deal with. Yes. We said this was 0.31. Sketch and let's give this a shot. Okay, let's do it again. So, for those of you guys that were wondering what it was that we're talking about, there you go. Sketch four. See, once again, it wants to select it. Oh, there you go. So, even though it selected it twice, it, it works miraculously. So cool. I'm going to hit OK. All right. So sorry I had to backtrack a little bit. Thank you again for the suggestion. I totally forgot about that. All right. So now let's go ahead and worry about the next part here. We got the hem of the dress. We got the waist. And now we need to offset one more plane. Click on here. Once again, the uh, default is one inch. Instead, we're supposed to go up 0.34. Let's change that to 0.34. And now we'll worry about the shoulders and then we're done. So let's go ahead and create a sketch onto here. I accidentally clicked, it, clicked on the wrong one. There you go. Rotate this around. And let's go ahead and let's put in our final measurements. So according to this, it's 0.76 by 0 0.54. 0 0.76 by 0 0.54. There we go. Finish our sketch and then hopefully this lofts correctly from here to here, and just hit OK. All right, just to make things a little easier to see, I'm going to turn off all of these planes here. And you're even welcome to turn off the planes that you've manually uh, added, so plane one and plane two, and the origin. Oh, yeah, there's plane three. There you go. There's the female figure. So when you guys go ahead and take a screenshot, make sure it's at an angle like this so I can definitely see the shape of it. And then you guys are all done. So 